Good evening, students. Tonight we're going to look at relating tenths and hundredths. In the unit, we're working on showing what we know about fractions and decimals by reasoning about their value. And today, you're going to build on what you learned yesterday to see how you can write tenths and hundredths as fractions and decimals. What are tenths and hundredths? Tenths and hundredths are decimal amounts, or fraction amounts representing less than one whole. If my square represents one whole, my square cut into ten pieces represents ten tenths. Shading in one of those pieces gives me one tenth as a fraction or one tenth, zero point one, as a decimal. My square cut into 100 pieces represents 100 hundredths. And by shading in one square, I have one hundredth as a fraction, or 0 0.01 as a decimal. It's important to remember that a decimal is a number with one or more digits to the right of the decimal point and it typically represents a value that is either less than one or a whole number amount with an amount less than one attached to it. Let's take a look at this example. Ty is reading a book about metamorphic rocks. He's read seven tenths of the book. What decimal describes the part of the book that Ty read? You can shade in the model to show seven tenths or use place value to help you write seven tenths as a decimal. In this model, I've shaded seven of the ten slices. I can write seven tenths as a decimal or as a fraction showing seven over ten and I read that fraction as seven tenths. As a decimal, I then use that place value chart to show 7 tenths has no ones and 7 tenths. I don't need to use the hundredths place since I only have 7 tenths. I write my answer as 7 tenths and I read it as 7 tenths. It's important to be able to recognize decimal points on a number line. If I have a number line from 0 to 1 cut into tenths, each point represents 1 tenth. And I can then identify 7 tenths by counting 7 spots, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and recognize that as 7 tenths. Go ahead and fill in the rest of the number line. Is that what you expect to see? Nice job. Let's try another one. What if Tara rode her bicycle for one and six tenths of a mi mile and we need to describe the decimal that shows how far she rode her mile? On the model, I've shaded one whole and six tenths to represent one and six tenths. I would write that as a fraction one and six tenths, and read it one and six tenths. I then use my fraction to then write the decimal one whole, the decimal point, and six tenths. Again, I don't have any hundredths pieces, so I don't need that part. And I write one point six. I read that as one and six tenths. Notice I say AND at the decimal point. Can you find 1 and 6 tenths on this number line? Is that where you thought it would be? Remember, since the number line is cut into 10 pieces, each mark represents tenth. 1 and 0 tenths, 1 and 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, 6 tenths. 
showing me this is 1 and 6 tenths. Now they want us to show 4 and 25 hundredths. Alicia won her 400 meter freestyle race by 4 and 25 hundredths seconds. Instead of tenths now, I have to shade in hundredths. Now that I've shaded in my model to show 4 holes and 25 hundredths, I can write my fraction 4 and 25 hundredths. To write that as a decimal, I have 4 holes and 25 hundredths. In my decimal place value chart, 4 holes and 25 hundredths is the same as 2 tenths and 5 hundredths. I write 4 and 25 hundredths and I read it as 4 and 25 hundredths. Look at the number line. They've identified 4 and 25 hundredths for you. Notice that 4 and 25 hundredths is between 4 and 2 tenths or 4 and 20 hundredths and 4 and 3 tenths or 4 and 30 hundredths. Let's name these models as a fraction and a decimal. Take a look and give them a shot. In this first picture I see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58 blue squares for 58 hundredths. As a decimal I write 0 and 58. In the second model I see one whole and then 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hundredths for 1 and 25 hundredths as a mixed number or 1.25 as a decimal. This third model is cut into tenths. I see one whole and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths for 1 and 5 tenths, or 1.5. This last model shows me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1 hundredths for 71 over 100 as a fraction and 0 0.71 as a decimal. Let's try some examples together. I don't want to draw models each time I have to turn a fraction into a decimal. Can I just look at this fraction and write it as a decimal? 8 tenths. There's no whole number and an 8 in the tenths place, so I write 0 and 8 tenths. For 44 hundredths, there's no whole number and 44 hundredths. What about going the other way? In this, I see a 7 in the tenths place, so I have 7 tenths. Here I have a 23 that ends in the hundredths place because it goes tenths, hundredths. So that would be 23 hundredths. Watch for this common error. What fraction is represented by the decimal 0 0.03? Is it 3 tenths or 3 hundredths? That 3 is in the hundredths place because we have the tenths and then the hundredths. So the answer is 3 hundredths, not 3 tenths. What about recognizing these points on a number line? This red arrow comes between 0 and 0 0.1. So I know then that it has to be less than a tenth. And when I think less than tenths, I know I'm really counting hundredths. This is going to be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 10 hundredths. My arrow is pointing at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hundredths, so I would label it as 0 0.07 
or seven hundredths. Where would you find thirty-two hundredths on this number line? My number line is counting in tenths, so I can add the zero to show it counting in hundredths. Thirty-two hundredths is going to come in between three and four tenths, but closer to three tenths for thirty-two hundredths. Look at this number line. Is it split into tenths or hundredths? Can you label these points? Give it a shot. This number line was split into tenths. Is this the spacing that you got? Great job. Notice that each space represents a tenth. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, and so on, until you get to ten tenths, which is the same as one whole. How are you doing? You should have a good idea about how tenths and hundredths are related between decimals and fractions. It's time to complete the check for this lesson. Remember to write the questions from the checks on your notes and bring them with you to class tomorrow. We'll start with these problems at the beginning of class. Have a good night!